and then uh, pledge to the flag from the place. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today, September 4th, 2012, the time is 7 p.m. The regular meeting of Greensburg Common Council is called to order. This time, I'm requesting all cell phones, pagers, any other electronic devices to be silenced, please. Roll call vote, please. Our roll call vote, please, Bridget. Here. 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 Do you see any changes, amendments, or additions to them? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve them as received. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. Thank you. Control business, Jeff Smith. Maybe 2010 S16 series ordinance. Second reading. Last month we approved the First stream amending 2010-16 for us a clarification of interference in our pre-treatment standard. I'd like to go ahead and pass it on the second and third reading if possible. Any questions? Take a motion to okay. I would move to pass on second reading ordinance 2012-12. Um, Favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Second reading passed. I take a motion to suspend the rules. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Passes. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, <coughs> same sign. What's that? We just voted twice. Why we vote? Thing. Okay. We vote on the suspending the rules. Right. Now third reading. reading. Entertain a motion for third reading. So second. Third reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Put the same sign. Thank, Thank you. sure of. Um, you begin with ashes there. Um, I'm, the court says residue from grills and it says trash burners. Out. We don't even permit that. Do you leave in the city? Bring no. trash? No. So, uh, you know, that, that's uh, old language from years ago. We need to strike that, I believe. And then, <clears throat> I don't know what other fires means. I think we need to, um, either modify that to clarify what it is we're talking about um, or say something like um, you know if we're talking about grilling or fireplace no fire well if I've got heating buildings I guess that's the fireplace I don't know how they refer to like the people that actually have the add on wood stoves or the wood stove type heating. I don't know in other words 
I'm sure there's some other permissible uses. Yeah. I don't know what they <coughs> all would be. <coughs> no, so I'm just, I don't know. So in other words, that's why it says other fibers. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think you're going to be able to come up with a description about every other possible fire. You no, can I, 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 I'm trying to modify it just to be like minor <laughs> or maybe similar if we got you know, for cooking, eating buildings, residue from grills or other similar like fire. Fires would be where I would, was going with it in order to kind of keep it to a, something that's permissible and yet, uh, you know, we're not, we're probably not going to, if there's a huge fire, something burning down. We'll, well since we're not going to know what they all are and we don't want to define them all in this ordinance, how about just putting our other and insert the word permissible? Perhaps question. What are we talking about? Talking about fire. Well, that's what I just picked up. <laughs> what can you do and what can't you do? Cook. Cook. Other out? Otherwise, you can apply to the fire chief for a permit to burn within the city limits. And I can go out. I evaluate what they've got. Is it going to impact neighborhoods? And at that point, I can give them a permit to burn within the city limits. And that could be almost any type of fire. Could be. So that it becomes a permissible fire. Yeah, it does. It could be any other kind of fire, so we don't know for sure what that would be. <coughs> permissible fire. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. I don't know how I'm going to look at the ashes and distinguish whether it came from permissible or non permissible. Look at, okay. I don't know if you are either, but <laughs> at least it clarifies to put some definition behind it. Well, you'll be able to see it anyway in the trash bag, right? Should be. All times it's in metal buckets. Um, I think in furniture, uh, I think that's clarified, but maybe we need to also, besides bed, maybe we to also say mattresses or that kind of thing. That's an awful common thing that's out there, and maybe by even identifying it specifically might help to deter, yeah, just adding one more word in there. And then under um, normal household items such as other small containers, um, to me, small containers are probably recyclable now, for the most part. And I understand what we're saying there, but I'm also wondering whether we want to have a de definition of what recyclable materials are and find some way in this ordinance or to um, the problem is we don't determine what is recyclable and what's not. That's determined done by the Decatur County Solid Waste District. I mean, and that changes at times based on the market. In other words, at one time I think you could recycle plastics one through nine. Right now you can recycle one through seven. It's because there was no market for eight and nine. Right. Well, I have no idea what through between any of them. Right. I but it, I know it changes off and off. I understand that, but and, and so leaving it there, but with is fine. But what made me think then was I maybe the other council members have read the thought, and I welcome their um, thoughts on that. But I think we ought to find some way to talk about recycling in this in this ordinance. That's my thought on it. really encourage it, that's for sure, because when I started recycling, I cut my trash in half. Well, that'd be a great uh, savings to the city, too, cutting back on trash. But can't we, I don't know how we would put a fight in an ordinance like this, though. You know, like the state of New York, they enforce it. Do they enforce it? it? They do, but in the, I don't think they go door to door like recycling police, but if you're found to be in violation, and it's state law, I believe, in recycling, then you are fined. I'm not talking about trying to find anybody, per se. I'm just trying to find we'll a get way to which we can identify what recycling is, and right. somehow we let people know that we expect that 
because uh, if we're talking about limiting the trash bags, which again I think is a reasonable thing to do, that ought to be in harmony with that. I mean, that's part of what we're saying. And and we do have a very convenient way for people to recycle in green buckets. The most convenient, I mean, as, as convenient as, as the trash pickup. Um, I think we ought to find a way to keep that in people's minds and keep people utilizing it. As Gerald said, that's going to save everybody down the way. The concern is, I mean, this is this ordinance doesn't really address that. I, we all agree, I think, and we all want to encourage it, but I don't know if this is the, the place to put that. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, just, I don't know how you'd incorporate it. I mean, that's what I'm getting at here. Um, well, I don't, I don't know that I have an answer to that either. I guess that's bringing up that we can think about it and, uh, and come up with something. Uh, or have our attorney come up with a thought, or maybe we can research some other uh, places that do recycling and have trash pickup and find out what their uh, ordinances might say or other things. I, I, can, I, I dealt with this in, with Columbus. There, were, there are a lot of different ways to skin this cat. You have, you have both the good and bad. You have good recycling, so uh, that's that's a positive. Uh, there are other communities. You know, Columbus doesn't have curbside recycling, for instance. So one of the things that that they really gave consideration to was adopting Bloomington's model, where you use the stickers for the trash. But that's not necessary. I, I don't think that everyone thought that was the route they wanted to go, or obviously didn't. What they ended up doing was going with toters and using different sizes and, and they sort of use different pricing scales to, to uh, incentivize the neighbors to, to try to recycle more to reduce the size of the total that they would need and thereby the, the cost to each family but that invites a whole different discussion yeah. as to whether you wanted you know those capital <coughs> expenditures etc so I, I i mean i've I think there's a lot of great ideas out there, but I, but, but council will probably have to uh, revisit what what's going on with recycling now and, and how they can tie that into incentivizing people to, to do more recycling. And and the only thing that I've heard of is is sort of doing it through the pocketbooks and charging more for the trash. I don't think that right now. Is, well, we don't charge. Yeah. So. Um, those are the ideas I'm familiar with, but that's not to say there's a lot more ideas out there. Well, I'm not suggesting we hold everything up for that. I mean, we can always amend it at some point in the future, right. too. Uh, so I'm not suggesting we have yeah. to come to the streets of all here to keep this thing moving until we get that perfect. <coughs> my would it help if I would uh, contact IAC sure. and ask the mayors uh, how they do? They have recycling. And I don't think it hurts to hold it off another month, you know, does it? To, well, you well, can, can do it for a reason. Yeah, this is for Well, right. Okay. But I mean, we don't have to pass it all tonight. We do. I don't see there's anything to pass tonight. Well, I know there's not. I don't have it. Okay, anything. so then there's. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will get that information out right away. My request for information, and I'll get it to you all the council. Containers to be 
130 gallons not exceed 40 pounds, then we say the large totes are acceptable. Uh, so if or but all trash, I don't know if they're going to pull out the trash out of the large container. Is that what you're saying? Okay, it's not. It's, then I think that needs to it's be. It's a lot more timely, and that's why it says if under the totes, but all bags within must be okay. placed, placed in tied trash bags. Uh, yeah, if they choose that. not to have a toter, this is all from the existing ordinance. Yeah, that they are allowed to use the plastic bag and simply send them out to the curb. Exactly. Uh, and, and uh, in other words, 30 years ago, everybody had a trash can with a metal lid. I now know. most people set out plastic bags. Right. I understand that. I'm just saying. I think when you say toters are acceptable, instead of saying but, I would say if they're only acceptable if all the trash bags are. If they're in trash bags and it's, they're tied or whatever. Um, under brush, um, I think it's something that we've been doing right now. It's at discretion. I don't think uh, Mark made a comment the other week that he's not sure that's he would want that to stay at discretion. I would agree that either we do or we don't, and not leave it at discretion unless there's reasons to do that. I'm willing. To, I'm interested in knowing what they might be and, and why we wouldn't do that. I think there's some inconsistency between B and D in terms of what we're saying about manageable size and then later on it's three feet and so forth. Um, and then E, I, I think I understand what we're saying there, but we're saying that uh, we've got to designate them as yard waste and I don't know exactly how we designate that we don't have anything uh, telling us what how we, how to do that and it might be instead of designating maybe maybe making it uh, designating it yard waste by separating it having it set separate from the trash or something like that I, again I'm just trying to be clear there um, 9318. I think talking. the next sentence says the bag must be tagged, designated, yard waste to leave so as not to be confused with trash. Yeah. That's me that in the first sentence. I know. And, and I guess I'm saying, how do you designate the bag? I'm saying, A lot of people, what they do is they use the clear bags for the yard waste. Therefore, you can see what's trash yeah. clippings. They're really pretty <coughs> easy to tell. Well, I know they are. I, I just didn't know if you had something in mind or if we would need it to find a way of designating. 9318, um, here's where I think recycling comes in. I think we ought to not pick up newspaper and cardboard since that is a recyclable, but. We could make it just like the end of 9314B where it says basically and are encouraged to utilize recycling to meet, you know, for, the, for this type of, you know, or something like that. But it's, it's already in there in one spot, just kind of move it and spread it out. And maybe that's the way you put it in there, Glenn, it's just. 93.14, which one? The, the, very, the one you talked about earlier, bags. actually, even. If you look at the very last line on it, where it's talking about the number of bags, it actually says uh, they're encouraged to utilize recycling to meet this limit. Mm -hmm. so you could just say that, you know, uh, you know sure. residents are encouraged to recycle rather than throw this material in the uh, trash. Right. Well, I, I guess I just would say having that designated out separate didn't seem to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can strictly strike it if you want. Well, I, I think I think incorporating my I mean, Jamie's idea of incorporating it there might might work very well because we could also talk about other items <laughs> that could be recycled. Uh, in addition to that, it should be. yeah, it should be recycled. Yeah. Um, and then my other question on, uh, I appreciate the uh, work on the articles not to be collected and, and what we're saying about what's going to happen if people persist in that. My question is, and I don't know, but is the, that cost of that service of $250, is that really high enough to discourage or will it, and I don't know, would somebody say, you know, that's not, I got such a big bunch of it here, I'm just going to let them do it. Not, it's cheaper for me to do that than do something else. That's my question. I don't know. It doesn't say that it will be 250 The minimum will be 250 
In other words, the way we do it on the grass ordinance with a $200 minimum, that's the minimum. If it takes me 30 minutes to mow your grass and the charge is $47.50, I mark out $47.50 and I charge you $200. By the same token, if they put out a large amount of trash, uh, for example, we cleaned the yard the other day that had been ignored, their bill was $987.50. Okay. So in other words, you sent me out the entire household and 30 squares of used shingles in the front yard, and I send four guys and spend the entire afternoon, you're going to get a $1,500 bill. The minimum is going to be 250 Okay, then maybe, uh, I agree that maybe we ought to then have something to state that it, you know, the, the amount of charge would be dependent upon the amount of, uh, the amount and the time of uh, required to take care of it. I think it says, the report is an official sworn statement showing the cost and expense incurred for the work. So in other words, okay. there is an itemized bill that is prepared. Okay. This section is actually copied exactly from the current grass and junk board okay. that was reviewed and put together, I think, by Mr. Court. All right. And that's why it's besides the specific code to where we can go in and file in the recorder's office okay. and have it placed as a tax assessment. Very good. I saw the 250. I didn't see the minimum because I was thinking the same thing. It needed to be higher. The other one said 200. This one is too big. Very good. Now, for clarification, uh, I want to go back to 9318. You simply want to put all residents. You want a second sentence? Or something about, uh, you know, this one's here. Or we encourage all residents to recycle this type of material, something like that. Well, well I think Ramirez would say what this, what that material is. Well, it, it, it is. It's 9318. It's newspaper and cardboard. Well, right. all newspapers, magazines, cardboard must be. Right. Well, that, that's right. And you know what they use are the recycling containers and all that. Right. So, Maybe we just need to state it as. Um, and you said newspapers and cardboard, then you could take the lobby picked up out of the unless it's recycled. Well, that's, we can't always control it because if you put it inside a bag, you don't see it or you, know, you can't collect it. But if the amount of bags are limited, then we'll encourage them to sure, recycle. I gathered the input for the bag and the limit. That was in discussions with Norma Bainbridge in the Administrative Food Solid Waste District. There's never been a bag in the city of Greensburg, and that's why she strongly encouraged me to put one in. Because that, from what she's ascertained from various meetings with other solid waste administrators across the state, when you put a bag limit in, and if you leave those bags, or if you charge them for each additional bag, those people will start to consider recycling because if they know if they got three green toters, they're free. And if they're getting the bill at the end of the month on the water bill, in most places, what they're doing, they're charging a dollar bag. They put 10 bags out every week, wants them to get their water bill, and they have a $20 surcharge for trash. That's when they start to look at the recycling option. The problem is it's a real logistics nightmare for the sanitation department track of every house where you pick up the same bag. Because you more or less have to carry spreadsheets for every household and you have to mark every bag on top of that. I mean, um, I, mean I, I guess it's, I, I don't know, maybe the, the ordinance is there not to penalize an occasional overbag here or there, but you know, maybe more it's a constant abuser, right? Um, I'll second you a, Statement or Senate Taylor Sue and people look at as far as clarifying that in terms of your recycling piece. The other things that we that are in here that we haven't discussed, a couple of the big changes was the addition of a commercial establishment. And our current ordinance says that we won't pick them up, but it doesn't tell you what one is. Um, I looked at several definitions of other cities' ordinances to come up with the commercial establishments. Uh, 
and we probably want to go over that. Um, it's on the front page. Front page under 9301, the definition for yeah. commercial establishments yeah. as far as businesses. Um, the big change you're going to see, and this was what several other communities have, is the mobile home complex with five or more individual homes shall also be considered a commercial establishment. Do we, do we have places like that now where we are? Currently we pick up two and we don't pick up the third. And my understanding, the reason we started picking up two of them was because they called in and complained to a previous administration and they were directed to start doing it. But I've had several calls from the operator of the one that we don't now, wanting to know why don't we get ours picked up. So they have the dump system side. Well, I'm asking for your direction as you're the council. Do you want to pick up none of them? The they're all on private be. streets. They're, yeah, private. Uh, they're narrow. I don't know if you remember, there was an incident in the one out in Vista Village where they crushed a child here a couple of years ago. Thank God it wasn't a garbage truck, it was a recycling truck. <laughs> yeah. It could have been the garbage truck five minutes later. The streets are narrow. Well, I mean, it's already put in. I mean, you go to the commercial establishments, and I say we pick up. Well, it's not in there currently. Right, this is new. That's this would be saying. new. So, well, if you want that language, then I think it would go with Absolutely. zero. I'm asking for your direction. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, in the past, if a person had water and made a pay their own water bill, they were eligible for trash in those type of situations. Uh, the other one we pick up. But if you look at those, I mean, that's not any different than. Maybe how you look at an apartment complex, right? So, uh, you know, we don't, we don't do those, right? No. So. But for some reason, at the request of the owner at that time, one of the retirement communities, we do go ahead and do pick up house to house in front of each unit. We can't pick and choose. We can't do that. Okay. Do you agree? I agree. Uh, I think I think we we are looking at residential service, not right. commercial service. I, I think if we're going to make that change, we should maybe let those places know ahead of time and give them an ample opportunity to find another service rather than just shut it off. You know? Oh, I, I mean, agree. You know, we need to make sure we give them plenty of time. It's, to, it's not like next Thursday, all of a sudden, everything stays no, up. Right. Well, well, I, I just want to know. So, we've got a long way to go yet. But we're not to that point. I think we'll have plenty of time. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll get that started tomorrow with IAC. Yeah. So, and the other one that we kind of touched on and didn't get back to is the one as far as the uh, the limbs, the trimmings. The reason there's so much variation is we used to put all of that in the garbage truck. That's why everything was small bundles, very small lengths, and it all went in the garbage truck. Now, we buy a very vague Indiana code, we're not supposed to put vegetation in the land. And that's why the solid waste district actually pays someone to process that material for us. It, it's a lot more work for us because we have to go around town and drive around and take it all up there, right. make a second trip all the way over town with equipment and manpower. Now, Mark, we've also ran into situations where people are clearing off of woods and they can and call and have the city out there up to say a little brush to grind. There's the whole woods. And I went out there and I said, no. Uh, that's, that brings another question. And in B, we got, it says we'll collect for property to remove our trim their own trees. And uh, again, I've, trimming, trimmings, um, trees, shrubbery, and so forth, I think are, and storm damage kind of thing, I think that's, that's uh, fair. Service. Yeah, that's proper. Um, 
But I think <clears throat> just like when we say that if you know somebody has a, a commercial vendor comes in and trims your trees or removes a tree, they have to clean, they should that should be part of their service that they take care of. I think in the same way that if you know somebody's going to take down a whole tree, you've got lots of wood there. I mean, whether you mean they're going to cut it up, remove it, and do something with it, you better figure out a way to do something with all of it. Is the way I would think. I would think it's if you trim the tree, small things, but if you're doing a, a major renovation, they should finish the job. They should they, they, the they, job. major renovation, you better. Have no, he's talking about. <laughs> If Gary Herbert decided to take a tree down in his front yard entirely and does it himself, we then, shouldn't pick it up. Well, that's what I'm saying. The city shouldn't be responsible for picking all that whole tree up. Uh, that should be, you either got to figure it out street. some way or you get a, somebody else there to do it. That's what I'm thinking. I think you have your the maximum diameter of what, four inches? Four inches wide in thickness mm -hmm. or thickness. Uh, that kind of narrows it down to trimming. Mm -hmm. You know, trees, the limbs that fall out, and once the people take and trim themselves, short pieces, yeah. trim the tree up, that's what we picked up. Not people have the whole trees cut down, which has happened. We went in before, we cut half a dozen trees down in town. Yeah. So, the worst problem is policing of it. Well, and it starts here in about well, about another month. We have a lot of people that come into Greensboro. They're not local vendors because we don't have very many people to trim trees locally in Greensboro. And they come in and they'll go to. I'm not saying it happens there specifically, but they'll go to Fairview position. and they just go door to door and we'll trim all of those this tree back and we'll cut this all back and take out four foot of canopy. It's not a huge, but it's a lot of, a lot of brush. Yeah. And they'll tell the property owner invariably, well, I'll do that for $250. If you just want to pile that up the curve, the city will chip that for you. And then, but if you want to pay me 500, yeah, I'll chip it and get rid of it all. Well, every property owner's going to go, oh my hell, yeah, 250. Sure. And we don't have the manpower to drive around town. No, I know that. So but look to see it, and it happens a lot. Because I've actually got into my personal <coughs> vehicle and drove out and found somebody and talked to him a few minutes. And he goes, "Have you got something you need trim?" And I said, "Well, yeah, Mom, tell me about it." He goes, "It's about that size." And he actually told me, "If you let me put the brush out in the city, I'll do it for two and a half and four hundred if I take it." And then I handed my card to the street commissioner, and I'd like to know. That anymore. And we did agree to take that pile since it already entered into the property. But it happens day after day after day in the fall. Well, maybe by. We got it in here pretty clearly that you're utilizing landscaping or tree services, that's their responsibility. And we just need to start asking people. I mean, I, I feel like people that do it themselves, we just about have to. You know, you'll find a lot of people, and we get a lot of calls also. Older residents, their kids come up on Saturday and bring the chainsaw and do some tree trimming for them, you know. Do I expect the kids to haul it off? Well, I think, I think we're in agreement that trimming is one thing, removing a whole tree is something else. And distinction we're trying to make, you know, whether it's sub or whether it's it gets burning. It's, it's, there's a safe distinction, you know, because it depends on what you call turning. Yeah. In other words, for example, I've seen Howard Watson haul two loads of brush off from trimming one tree. And it's all under four inches. Right. Yeah, but that's, he's, he's a professional landscaper. But there's people that do that on their own also. In other words, that tree is 25 foot tall, the other one at 15, they go in and cut 10 foot off all the way around it. Are you suggesting that we remove that completely and we only pick up form or shrubbery? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I'm not. I don't, I'm, I don't have a strong... <laughs> you're, well, you're, that's the way it was originally intended. 
they used to only pick it up when there was storm damage. And they put 90% of it in the garbage truck. Now we can't put it in the garbage truck, so we have a lot more of it to deal with. I don't think you can take that service away from everybody in the city and you guys not catch one tremendous amount of health in the You know, I think we're going to have to do it. And that's why I have all the question marks after paragraph A, because I'm asking for your input also. You know, I'd like to see maybe where we just done it one weekend or one week a month. The first weekend of the month, what's your brush? But then the thought is, I might not have enough manpower to get it done in a week. Yeah, because that would be encouraging, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We post that. I've had people say the same thing. Well, I'll just have heavy trash pick up the first week of every month. Oh my God! We've had some. We won't pick it up the next three as everybody recuperates. Mark, you don't enough manpower to take care of everybody like they like for you to. We have we've gotten that out to where we just do the grinding on the trash route the day of the trash pickup to right. those residences. So we we we've had people just trash picks up on Thursday. They trim the brush on Friday. Expect you to come and get it because they want to clean for the weekend. Yeah, and that's so we'll review it, everybody review it, and we'll add to it next month. I do have it as a Word document. Would everybody like it sent to them as a Word document? Yes, please. Tim, you want one too? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, the other item is the two distinctions on the Phoenix position as far as the job description. I think you want to make sure that there's clarification as far as the skills and knowledge section of it, and those have been added accordingly. than just to bless it. That one I would like to have a blessed chance, yes. unless you've got additional corrections. In other words, the, the majority of it is based on certification and education. And it's all on the top of page two. There's three items. One of them requires the completion of the post-secondary education program. It's a minimum of 60 credit hours, semester hours. It says to maintain an ASE or equivalent certification, including needed continuing education and then also five years of full-time work experience in the mechanics position. The pieces that you had in here in your uh, proposal talked about um, computerization and maintenance schedule, which you've got included in that uh, job description. Um, and I think there might be something interesting. Yeah, both of them had something about inventory in. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess you're trying to uh, do a better job with, with that inventory with this type of person. Um, not only scheduled maintenance, um, but that was on both of those, right? I mean, we're not. Uh, some of it might have been, some of it. Pre-season preparation of storm. That's there, part of just the same your ordinary uh, maintain. Uh, I think the big change is this one because of the qualifications and the certification. This one also addresses citywide, fleetwide, whereas this one dealt strictly with the street department. Yeah, we got all city departments. Right? Yeah. So there's been a this one expands out yeah. quite a bit more on that regard. Yeah. Right. On the very specific qualifications. Correct. Have we, has the council approved the job descriptions on the, in the uh, personnel book before? Yes. We have. 
here, the other one here is original, right? Correct. So I would move acceptance of the job description for ASC mechanic. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. And I think, Bridget, that has to go up then to our Fort Wayne individual. Yes. And then he'll implement that in with all the others. Yes. Good, because I misspelled four. I have a pro on the bottom of the second page. Yeah, people price it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I figured somebody will catch that. I caught that right yeah. away as I flipped through it today. One other thing, uh, while we have you here, our gentleman has taken that position and he's here tonight. This is Mr. Jerry Adams. He started this morning at 7 o'clock and I had him changing out headlight switch in the garbage truck from the lights at 7.02 this morning. <laughs> so we're glad to have him. Well, I take care of all the old business. Uh, before we start new business, I would like to ask the council for a change. Tax abatement. I would like to have Ms. Patty Jackson from Service Eagle Southeast and then the others of my commission. Uh, she asked me a month ago today about being on the agenda for this month, and I don't know how it was missed. I, I did my part, but I missed it. Uh, if we can put Patty Service in under the uh, abatement request, everybody okay with that? Yes. Thank you. You need a motion to change the agenda? Yes, I think you should. I'll make the motion to second. I'm sorry. He read my mind. No, he read my mind. It's a short story. You said what you were making a motion for, so I did. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, Council. Appreciate it. Okay, first up is Hitachi, Outer Metals, Mr. Greg Owens. Uh, we have an additional handout. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself and also a talk here. Um, my name is Greg Owens, and I'm the Vice President at Hitachi Power Metals, USA. And I've been there for 25 years now, and I was actually the you know, first engineer hired on to help do the original construction of the building. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Todd Churchboard, and uh, he is from Bacon Tax Management, and we have hired him to help represent our company for the tax abatement uh, procedures and forms and so forth. Uh, next, uh, we'd just like to briefly go over this handout, and um, I'll uh, start off to explain the details about the actual expansion, and then Todd will explain a little bit about the tax side of it. Um, Hitachi Powder Metals USA, formerly Century Technologies Incorporated, uh, is proposing to make a substantial investment in this Greensburg location. The project uh, includes an expansion of approximately 130,000 square feet, to give you kind of an idea, our existing building is around 170,000 square feet, so it almost doubles the size of our manufacturing facility. And uh, that cost is going to be approximately $7.7 .7 million. In addition, uh, we will purchase personal property investment or equipment at a value of approximately $31 million. Now, if you take a look at the second page, it kind of gives you a breakdown of the different pieces of equipment that will be included in that uh, $31 million investment. And if you take a look at the second uh, column, the life expectancy, uh, we highlighted that um, most of this equipment that we will be purchasing uh, will have a life expectancy of 25 years or more. <clears throat> and maybe to expand on that a little bit more, uh, in manufacturing, uh, sometimes you have dedicated lines that are purchased and they only last the life of a engine model case of powder metal, which is a primary process, manufacturing process for our company, um, we can use the same equipment over and over and over uh, by just changing out the tooling 
and using the same equipment uh, for one model of the vehicle or engine component after another. And in fact, uh, a lot of the equipment that we're using today, we actually purchased 25 years ago, and what we're still using today for manufacturing of products, the automotive industry primarily, and uh, quite frankly, we expect it to last maybe another 25 years. So uh, as long as you maintain the equipment, uh, refurbish it in some cases, uh, because of the cost involved in some of this equipment, uh, it lasts uh, for a very long time. And uh, we expect the same for this equipment that we're going to purchase as part of this investment. Uh, the current employment is of 100, 147 Employees, uh, we expect to hire an additional 49 employees, which as a result will provide $2.2 million of additional uh, payroll, tax payroll, um, bringing the total projected uh, annual payroll to about $8.7 million. Uh, tonight we're seeking a 10 year tax abatement for both the building expansion and the uh, personal property investment. Again, uh, the reason why we're asking for the 10 year for both is that the majority of this investment uh, we expect the life of that equipment to uh, last 25 years or more and a good example of that of course is like I explained a lot of the equipment that we're using now has lasted that long we're expecting to use it even longer. With that I'm going to hand it over to you Todd. All right. Um, I think the, the one thing uh, that is important to understand <coughs> With, with the way Indiana's um, property tax structure is for personal property taxes. I'm not sure that everybody understands this, um, but just on, on a technical issue, for personal property assessment purposes, the, the assets that are placed in service in a business maintain a residual value, or what we refer to as a floor value, equal to 30% of the cost of the equipment for the duration of its existence. So piece of equipment may become fully appreciated or, or depreciate down to a book value of zero for accounting or for, for tax income tax purposes. But for Indiana property tax purposes, the aggregate total assessment at a facility for personal property cannot go below 30% of the original cost. So for as long as, so for example, Greg mentioned the equipment that they purchased 20 or 25 years ago it is still being assessed at 30% of its cost. So um, if you look at the, the third page of the attachment, what we did was we ran some projections just to give you an idea as to what this approximate $31 million of equipment investment means in terms of tax revenues, um, assuming a 10-year abatement is granted. And you can see the annual incremental revenues as the abatement phases, or the assessment phases in over the 10-year period. And then um, and it, in total over the 10-year period, even under this abatement period, it's about, um, in aggregate, about an additional $1 million of personal property taxes will be paid. And over a 20-year life, you can see the, the last line there, years 11 through 20, it's gonna be generating um, over $200,000 a year in personal property taxes. Uh, so in total over a 20 year period, uh, we didn't even take this out to 25, but just over a 20 year period with a 10 year tax abatement, you're still looking at, at nearly $3.2 million of incremental uh, property tax revenue as a result of just a personal property investment. Um, <coughs> so that's part of the, you know, unlike some of the other um, manufacturers that may have shorter uh, life equipment, that may only last for 10 years or 12 or 15 years. We have a different situation here from Taj. Uh, we think it warrants consideration for the, the maximum of uh, period. Um, this is a substantial, as Greg mentioned, it is a substantial equipment investment. Um, it represents, from a personal property standpoint, about a 40% increase over their current investment, um, bringing, bringing the total investment in this facility to about $100 million. Um, these jobs uh, that are being created pay well. Average uh, annual salary wages for each job created is about $45,000 a year. Um, the last bullet point here, I can let Greg address more, but, but the one issue 
is, is that Hitachi is a global company, and they are going to, to look at, uh, you know, they need to consider all aspects of where they're going to place investment. So the, the facility here in Greensburg isn't just competing against its competitors. It actually has to compete to a certain degree internally with other Hitachi facilities for the allocation of capital, which is made at a corporate level. So, you know, corporate accountants and finance people are looking at these types of investments. They will look at property tax loans and that sort of thing and determine the, the rate of return on investment. Um, you know, there are certainly most countries and, and in some states in the United States don't have personal property taxes at all. So uh, there are you know, a number of factors that are going to take that consideration. Um, be happy to answer. You know, my primary purpose here is to try to answer if there's any questions regarding the technical aspects of the abatement or the personal property taxes as we prepare their uh, Hitachi's annual property tax returns and have been doing so for a number of years and I'm pretty familiar with, with the numbers and, and that sort of thing. So maybe I can add one additional comment to the last bullet point. Um, for those of you that aren't that familiar with Hitachi Powder Mills USA, they're actually, they have, uh, Hitachi Powder Mills was bought out about three years ago by Hitachi Chemical. So they're now 100% owned by Hitachi Chemical, which is a very large company that sells over $5 billion a year, uh, very large. In fact, the uh, size of Hitachi Powder Metals globally is in 8% of their entire business. So uh, Hitachi Chemical is, uh, has an agenda to uh, expand aggressively globally. Uh, in Japan, of course, uh, everyone knows that the value of the yen has impacted their ability to compete. So they're looking to uh, expand very aggressively globally. And as Todd mentioned, that it's not a guarantee. So not only uh, will we make this decision tonight, Let's say this this proposal it also could impact uh, additional opportunities later, which uh, we have a very good opportunity to actually get. So Hitachi Chemical has a lot of different products that uh, they want to move and they want to be able to produce in North America. We want them to produce those in Greensburg. Uh, however, it has to be very competitive, and so they're going to not only take a look at um, how successful we are now to be able to, to get some to make the investment. But also, it will impact future opportunities, which we definitely have when it comes to where they're going.